Hello everyone! RPG Kingdom Kid here, back with some more World Ends The World Ends With You Final Remix. In the previous video, we beat the ultimate enemy, Mr. Honeycoma, and we beaten that third challenge the third week uh, challenge guy. So yeah, so we're all set to do the new day. I think that's what it was called. Was that what it was called? Hold on. <laughs> Check. Yep, we're all set to do a new day one. I don't know why they say it's one. It sounds like there's going to be more, but uh, I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, guys, that's not what we're going to do yet. What we're going to do in this episode, we're going to read all these reports that we get when you do these criteria. Majority of them is like... So, every, every first day of the week, you go to the Statue of Honeycoma, and you will check out that, that statue, and then you'll get it. You can only get... Like, the only things that you can do when you're going through this game is doing all the pig noises. Those are the only ones that you can really do. Everything else, you kind of have to wait until you are able to do chapter selection. Um, and then, yes, yeah, and then some of the stuff like... Uh, uh, I mean, can't remember what it is for this one, but, like, for this one... Like, you know, the get to Yukata. It's like, and then that little blue line gives you a hint. It's that hint is the Forgotten Ramen. So in day three of Shiki's week, remember there's a guy that went to ramen place. So when you're imprinting on him, you're supposed to tell him ramen. So then you, and then you'll go back to the ramen store and then he'll get the ramen that, that he uh, left there. So it's, it's nice little stuff like that. Like they're pretty easy to, and if anything, you can just look it up. Same with like the boss symbols. The boss symbols can be pretty hard, but they're normally like bosses that you fought, or um, sometimes they're just noises. Um, so it's nothing too major. By the yeah, it's still. Uh, I really do enjoy this game a lot. So, all right. Uh, okay, without further ado, let's start reading these. Uh, uh, things. They're, they can be pretty long, so that's why I'm gonna, like, be splitting this into, like, okay, so this, uh, part will be Shiki's, uh, reports, uh, then the next episode will be Joshua's, and the next episode's Beats. And then, uh, then when we're done reading Beats, we'll do the New Day, and I don't know how long that'll take us to do, but then once I'm done with New Day, uh, we'll read the Another Day, or Secret Day X and New Day, uh, reports. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, the, like, the reason why I, I was like, uh, he's playing this into parts is because, well, um, they're actually quite long, so, alright, without further ado, let's start with Cheekies. See, like, this is six pages. As a common knowledge, all games in the UG take place under our supervision. However, this particular game is saddled with an un a nigh unbelievable set of ex extenuating circumstances. Catching the attention of the higher plane. Thus, I shall be taking a more hands-on role this time, as detailed in this report. The core differences in this game are as follows. Oh, I actually have to hit that thing up. One, its, rule, its role in, in plans for Shibuya's destruction. Two, the composer's absence from the UG. Three, the resulting limitations of his powers. And four, the game being played by a proxy. The composer has informed me of two major points. He plans to destroy the UG, but also has, but also that his final decision will hinge on the outcome of his game with the conductor. A pivotal rule for the game requires the composer to vacate the underground. It is unprecedented for the composer to be absent during the game. He cannot predict what effects it may have. Furthermore, the composer must lower the frequency of his vibe to travel from the UG to the RG. If inve inevitably curtailing his abilities. This makes investigating the conductor and his strategy incredibly difficult, as the composer is still the only one who knows who and what I am. It means lingering in the UG to author reports carries a lengthy risk. The greatest randomizer in the current game is the use of a handicapped proxy to complete to beat against the conductor in the composer's stead. No information on this person exists at present. While the situation seems dire, I believe the key to getting ahead of all this is at hand. You see, time always builds upon the past. I have always located our key. I have already located our key. It is, it is a pin request from the conductor. Normally, the psych manifestation of pins are determined by one's imagination. Thus, by ana analyzing the pin, the user's imagination, or rather their true intentions, are revealed. 
Unfortunately, this order came through the composer and never came into contact with the conductor. Thus, I cannot use it to determine the nature of his imagination. I, too, have lowered my vibe to tune into the UG, limiting my abilities. However, at this stage, realizing that this pin holds the key is sufficient. The possibility of force, forestalling the plans for the UG's destruction remains. Also, guys, if you know who the author is, some of this stuff is, brings a lot of, like, the plot to life. Um, that's, uh, that's good. Uh, throws at us during beats, uh, during the, uh, beats week. So, it's pretty cool, I, I think. The okay, next one is... Nope, oh, yeah. Tricky Day 2. Alright. As the reports at that... Mm. As the game was set to end, I felt an intense burst of soul. And at its source, I found the composer's handpicked proxy, one Neku Sakuraba. Let it be known that once danger was passed, the soul he expelled rapidly t tapered off. I shall define soul as it exists in the UG later. For now, let it suffice to say it is the energy he bears within him. His unstable soul is the result of a rift between his body and emotional mind. This discord can be traced to a few causes. One. His dense and all-inclusive soul com 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 composition. Two, emotional confusion inhabited the unity of his emotional self and physical body. And three, the exaggeration of, of that confusion by memory loss due to his entry fee. However, anyone possessing such diverse soul can become a formidable wielder of imagination. The composer is right to choose this boy. Shibuya's fate may rest on how well he manages to stabilize his soul. To measure his stability, I gave him a harmonizer pin. It can only be used when he cooperates with his partner. Synchronizing with another hinges on his ability to first stabilize his own soul. Thus, successful use of the pin should indicate he has mind. He has made progress on that front. The further he is able to push his his and his partner's psych re resonance through fusion, the greater his own inter. inter Internal stability will become will have to come. The process of his soul merits close observation henceforth. So that already kind of gives you a hint, like, oh, this is who the author is. I mean, if the uh, hold on, if uh, hold on, I, I know there's one there's one thing in here that kind of like says the the report's author is like one of the clues for something. Uh. It's probably during Josh. Yeah, see, right here, the secret report to author. So that that basically tells you who the secret, who the author is already. So, I mean, if you haven't already figured it out by reading some of these uh, reports. So. All right, secret report three. Or uh, yeah. Excuse me. Allow me to redefine the composer's role. As I continue to observe the game's progress, I have a clear view of the enormous effect of the composer's absence. Clear definition of his duties are key to understand the exact of this disrupt disruption. The composer holds absolute authority over the underground. By authority, I mean the right to determine rules. He is the only one who can change the composition of the UG and sole creator of this Shibuya. The underground Shibuya is created and organized by the composer's rules, which pits players against reapers in a struggle for survival. A new composer only arises when the previous one is defeated. The victor takes the victim's place. At that, at this juncture, the new composer rewrites the rules of the UG Shibuya. However, there, there being no composer at all is a different situation. It means the rules that make up the UG are invalid. In other words, without composer, the underground collapses. However, the composer's absence is still secret. At present, only three people know. The composer himself is opposite the conductor and the producer. Okay. So, hold on, before I continue reading. So, I joked when I, when we were fighting the producer uh, for Tintin Slammer. He's like, he's like, he's the producer of the, um, uh, of the, uh, he was the producer of the game. Uh, but the true producer is the author of these uh, secret reports. The producer's role is that a guardian over the, is that of guardian over the game. For observation purposes, he must sometimes descend from the higher plane to the underground. While the producer is natively, natively an entity from the higher plane, he can adjust the frequency of his vibe to visit the UG and lower planes. 
Think of a radio. Going from station A to station UG simply requires to tune into a different frequency. The producer has the power to con contact any and all beings in the underground. However, he is playing. However, he is strictly prohibited from revealing his identity in the UG. His existence endangers the stability of the rules and the balance of the UG and RG. Thus, the producer's identity must stay a secret from Reapers and players, not to mention those in the RG. He may free freely contact only one person as the producer, and that is the composer. Yep. Get more and more intense as we go through these uh, reports here. Alright, Shiki Day 4. <coughs> Excuse me. The UG exists as a separate plane where the composer can judge the worth of man. Within it are Reapers and human players. It is, in, in, it is infeasible for the composer to judge all of humanity by himself. So a filtering system utilizing the Reaper, Reapers was completed. Created. The Reapers game. Reapers act as a test, weeding out unfit players. Upon becoming a Reaper, one's physical body changes, gain incredible strength and an extended lifespan. A reaper and a player alike progress, progress through the game, in, engaging in imagination-driven combat. Their soul is refined. Soul is abstract matter revealed through our research into life and death and, at, and a component in the makeup of the atmosphere. Humans, well, humans will thought all phenomenal. As reapers execute the game, they undergo a process of evolution from grunts to officers to the composer. Composer. However, reapers, however, reapers that follow the ideal route are rare, and most are erased by players. Reaper or player, the, those erased from within the game disperse their mi the mind and spirit housed within their flesh in the form of soul. Thus, they are erased only from visible existence. Their soul persists in the UG until gathered and tied together according to a new code. This new code is essentially imagination. Given significant imagination, any form is possible, be it a pin or a reaper. Variation in this code, code causes the soul to manifest in different forms. In other words, humans. Reapers and noise are all entities formed of soul. The only difference is their code. code. And what are noise? Entities without consciousness will. Conscious will. Only to, only to drive up to multiply. Thus they constantly thirst for soul. Attacking players and possessing humans in the real ground. Soul consumed by noise is destroyed, even if the noise is erased. Thus, possessed humans often exhibit a rush of euphoria immediately after the noise is removed. Though untested, the same would likely hold were a player or reaper possessed. Yeah, I believe. Yeah, this is, uh. Uh, this was the. He kinda also points out some stuff that, like, they explained in that day. So, like, you know, he talked about the Unity pin here. Uh, he talked about, um. You know, basically the basics of the game here. Uh, can't really remember. Uh, I guess he talked more about his role and his role and such. Uh, he talked about like what happens to players when they're erased, and guess what happens in here? So uh, Ryan got erased. So, so sometimes his his um um his uh oh the uh thing is a bit um fitting for what they're talking about for that day. The real ground and underground are planes of existence. Other planes exist as well. The one inhabited solely by noise, for example, or our cust cust customary plane. The planes are stacked in parallel, though each exists at a different frequency vibe, in tune with its inhabitants. Observing a lower plane from a higher plane is simple. Actual transplanter contact, while possible, is highly complex. The vibes of a jet... Uh, Adjacent planes are closer, making progress between the, them comprehensively easier. More distant planes show greater differences in vibe frequencies, and thus communication begins more difficult. The UG exists just above the RG, allowing those in the UG to observe the RG, but, no vice, but not vice versa. Noise exists on a special plane that straddles both the RG and the UG, enabling their interface in the affairs of both. When players come into contact with noise, they are drawn into the noise plane. In other words, players are forcibly tuned into the noise plane. 
Conservatively, there exists an even higher plane than the RG and UG. This is where I am from, the plane of the angels. As the RG and UG, angels have created a web of social schema to guide their activities. The role of producer is just one cog in the angel machine. Angel vibes are extremely high frequency. Not even the composer can catch them all. In actuality, he can pick up only that of the producer. As you can see, interplane plan air contact is beset by difficulty, but certain mo modes do exist for its realization. One is the modulator decal within this area of effect. Players from the UG can manifest visibly in the RG and communicate with others there. Reapers and the composer can, can down tune their vibes at will. Near these decals, however, even their vibes will be forcibly adjusted to the lower frequency. Another mode in printing requires no physical manifestation in the RG. In printees, experience a preferred thoughts as bursts of inspiration. The, reli the reliability of these communiques thus depends upon the person receiving it. Yes, that right? Was it receiving it? Yeah, receiving it. For example, successful communication within preoccupied people uh, is unlike. Furthermore, recipient interpretation of said inspiration colors the message, making imprinting unreliable at best. Reaper Creeper was created as a mode of popular communication between the planes. Modulating paralogs printed on paper allow for limited UG interaction with real ground ob ob objects. As those in the RG are unaware of the players, they preserve the illusion of a coin moving by itself. So yeah, so day, day five we learned about uh, Reaper Creeper, and it wasn't until, what was it, day, day three we learned about imprinting, I believe so. Yeah, day three was when we learned about imprinting, but like, he explained a little more about imprinting and of course Reaper Creeper on the day five report. Though. So like, these reports are very interesting, so, uh, and they're pretty easy to get to, like, uh, as long as you're like at a high level, you don't have to beat me, you don't even have to beat the, those, uh, enemies on, um, hard, if you don't want to, like, or, uh, ultimate, you can fight them on hard, and it'll be pretty good. Alright. Uh, I receive periodic communication from the composer. While we maintain contact, I am prohibited from providing him with information of risk or unbalance in the game. I am permitted only to respond to his communications for certain items, and even then I am able only to create and deliver said items. The composer has requested increased phone for functionality for use in the next game. Today, the proxy's partner, one Shiki Misaki, Freed herself from her defining value, envy. Within this, the composer is convinced of the proxy's victory on the seventh day. This confidence arises because the proxy's in intervention was indis indispensable. Indi indispensable. Yeah, that's right. In causing his partner's growth, it signals the proxy's departure from his ob observed self actualization loop. Previously, even the composer was unsure of his of his proxy's capacity for growth. So yeah, see, they kind of mentioned like, hey, you know, who gives a shit what you think or such? Like, you know, with Neku helping out Shiki on uh, day six here. So, normally the composer possesses a certain degree of clairvoyant foresight. His current downtune state, however, limits his abilities, clouding his best super super temporal vision. Though able to observe the UG from the real ground, he is otherwise saddled with limitations. For one, his out outward appearance. He looks younger than he would at full vibe frequency within the UG. Fortunately, this prevents the Reapers from recognizing him as the composer. To begin with, the composer conducts Reapers only through the conductor, so most are unaware of what he, act what he looks like. Additionally, as the being of the underground with the highest vibe, some lesser Reapers are in incapable of perceiving you. The effects of down tuning occur because the composer's vibe and the RG's frequency are substantially different. For Reapers, the down tuning necessary for, to exist in the RG is significantly less, and thus affects less pr prominent change. That said, it depends on the Reaper. At any rate, the effect is minimal, making Reapers much more frequent visitors to the real ground. 
Trying they complete their duties, Reapers may do as they wish in the RG within certain accepted boundaries. So yeah, so uh, it was day six where we kind of helped Shiki become more like a, uh, you know, where she's like, oh, you know, we, we helped her come to terms with her envy uh, right there. I think, um, does this game have any ties to the seven deadly sins? I don't think so. Uh, not from my memory, because in all honesty, like, we've already done ev like, we have done everything that the main game had. So, everything, or uh, the original game, excuse me. Like, we've done everything that the DS version had, like, um, beat the story mode, beat another day, beat the ultimate enemy, and now we're reading through the reports. So we've already done everything that, like, the new, or that the original version had. Um... So, I, and I don't th remember anything about the Seven Deadly Sins, like, maybe, maybe that's, like, somewhat of, like, their whole, um, what is it, their prize entry or whatever, but I don't think that's the case. I think it was more so, like, it's only for special cases, like, it's not going to talk about all Seven uh, Deadly Sins, but, uh, but still. Alright, here's the last one for Shiki's Day, or Shiki's Week, Day 7. As the composer predicted, the proxy has won the game. So what happens to those who survive the week? Those who, whose imagination is less than outstanding are broken down into soul, while those with excellent imagination become reapers. The most talented of the, those may travel to the next plane, inhabited by us angels. Diligent reapers, too, may pass through the office of, to, of composer to ascend to the plane of angels. And now, a what if. This may sound odd, but one may also choose to be reincarnated. Well, the word reincarnated is not quite accurate, for the humans of the UG are not truly dead. They merely possess different soul code and have been tuned into a different plane. We angels do not consider it a loss if a talented player elects to return to the real grounds as their superior imagination will inspire other humans. Upon returning to life, the exp expeditional players' creati creative activities soon make their mark upon society. As art, music, and other output become a part of culture spread and preserved persisting through the time, refining people's imagination even without personal contact with the player. Certainly, this requires time, but no one has ever accused angels of being in a hurry. The composer's absence during this particular game, however, means that reincarnation is not an option. So even even though they said they were brought back to life, like, like hey, bring us back to life, they weren't really brought back to life yet. Only the composer possesses the level of imagination necessary to reincarnate. It's beyond the conductor's needs. The conductor continues to act as if the composer were present, but this fa farce can only continue for so long. I'll be watching with great curiosity to see how the conductor responds once his ruse unravels. As I was busy writing reports, the boy in my custody, Beat, went missing. Beat has expressed curiosity in how noise was created. Perhaps he plans to ask a reaper, but even without a specific inst instruction from them, he has the, the ability now. I gave him a pin, pin filled with the special imagination required to create noise, and imprinting him with instructions for its use. This does not qualify as interference in the game. In pin. The information I gave him will have no impact on the game's results. It was merely a token of my esteem for his unflinching passion towards what he holds dear. Whether he uses his power and how is completely up to him. So see, we get even more and more insight. Like, as we keep reading these reports, we're getting more and more insights about how, you know, I'm just going to flat out say, Mr. Hanikoma kind of, like, preserved the game and how his observations through the game were. Like, uh, you know, he, he explains more so the game. Um, he says, like, okay, so, like, I imprinted Beat with information and I gave him that pin, but that does not count as me interfering in the game at all. I was just, you know, just doing, doing my duty. So it doesn't, it didn't matter, like what Mr. Hanikoma said or did with Beat. It was like this doesn't matter. It's not going to affect the outcome of the game, and it didn't. It didn't affect the outcome of this game. It, I don't know if it. I don't. I can't remember what he says in the other reports, or at least during Joshua's reports, uh, how it, how the, how Beat is would uh, interfere with that. So. So yeah, we learned a lot, a lot of stuff, so like, reincarnation was only possible if the composer was there. And as we all know, the composer wasn't there. 
it was just the conductor. So reincarnation was not possible. So that's why Shiki could never was never really ever brought back to life at any point. And and that's why he, and if, and we know like it could be like an excuse. I honestly don't know if only one person. He never really specified that only one person can be brought back to life if they choose so. Like, I guess it all depends on where they rank in the thing. I honestly don't remember. But he probably came up and, and he probably came up with those like quote unquote rules by like only one person can be reincarnated because of Neku being uh, the composer's proxy. So he knew that he was the proxy. So he was like, okay, I need to keep you in the game for as long as I can so I can break you and such. So that's why he like had him there. So yeah, that, it's really nice to like get some insight from these reports. But anyway, guys, that is going to do it for this episode of Let's Play. The world ends with you. Uh, in the next part, we will be reading Joshua's reports. I'm very excited to learn about this one because he's probably gonna have more insight about like, oh, Neku has Neku's back in the game again, and this time his partner is the composer. So. It's going to be very interesting. I honestly, I read these reports when I first got the DS, but I honestly can't remember what any of them were. But anyway, guys, thank you all so much for watching this video. If you liked the video, please give that like button a click. Comment down below what you like about the video, what you didn't like about the video. And let me know what, um, what kind of insight, um, are you looking forward to getting? And how do you feel about the insight that we got from these reports? So, yeah. And as always, guys, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a beat. And subscribe to my main channel, too. That's in the description below. As well as follow me on Twitter. Both my main Twitter, RBG King Kid Twitter, are in there too. I want to thank you all so much for watching once again. And I'll see you all next time.